second. There we go. And Dorota is Brilliant. on her way and should be in here momentarily as well. Fantastic. So where in the world are you? Are you sitting now? <laughs> uh, at home in, in Pennsylvania in the U.S., uh, I'm just north of Manchester, home of Grimfest, uh, or, or as I like to call it, home of virtual Grimfest this year. It's a shame. that I think everything's gone virtual this year, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we just finished Fantasia, and um, yeah, it was all virtual. Um, it's, it's interesting. Everyone's ro rolling with it, right? Rolling yeah. with the punches. It's kind of like you've either got a choice of, oh, well, let's delay it and not do it, or let's do it differently and i'm glad that everybody seems to be going for the let's do it differently yes for sure i agree um i think dorota might be trying to get in okay let me have a look uh admit yep there we go. <laughs> thank you for the nudge no worries no worries <laughs> nice uh dawn of the dead poster you got back there it looks like it's a signed poster it is it's signed by uh, george romero tom savini ken foray and uh, galen ross so I had okay. that done a few years ago. I was fortunate enough to meet them all at a Comic Con, and uh, and have a chat with them all. So it's uh, yeah, that's awesome. Nice little John Carpenter signed one up there as well. I went to awesome. see his. Uh, there we go. Got to realize oh, the, cam yeah. the camera mirrors. It's like which way am I pointing? But uh, so I watched on Earth this afternoon. And thoughts? Yep, I love it. <laughs> it's it's. I love seeing a horror film or a film in general that's very different. And I'm very happy that On Earth is one of those films. Oh, good. It's, certainly you'll find, because uh, Grimfest obviously horror-themed related, and there are certainly horrific moments in On Earth. I, I, I didn't read the plot synopsis from it, because I always prefer to go into a film called not knowing anything about it. Obviously knew that, that you two directed it beyond, and what it was called, but beyond that, I didn't do any research whatsoever, which is how I generally like to watch films. And I'm so glad that I did that one on Earth because it is a case of where's this film going? <laughs> What's going on? And it worked better for me, I think, with, with that. So how do you pitch? Because it would be a very easy film to to sort of tell somebody the storyline to and kind of ruin it. Sure. You know, then go, oh, well, I've just told you all the really cool stuff that you would have been like, oh, wow, I, I did not see that coming. So how did you pitch? How do you pitch on earth to somebody who's like, oh, I've not heard of that. What's it about? Yeah, really the, uh, the three words that you instantly get a reaction of is uh, you just say it's a fracking horror film uh, and people's eyes either like light up instantly and they're like, ooh, mm -hmm. you know, or de depending on maybe if they're more conservative or if they work in the industry, they'll be like, ah, oh, okay, I see. I see what you're doing there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, um, well, thank, thank you. And it's, it's great to hear that, um, that you went in, in cold. Uh, yeah. so we, you're, you're fresh off of your experience. I am a couple of hours ago, I finished watching it. So it's, uh, it's, I've, I've had it for about a week, but it's like, you know, what? I always prefer to watch something, especially if I'm speaking to the, the two geniuses behind the film, uh, <laughs> then to have it fresh in my mind and stuff. So where did the idea of it? come from because john you you co-wrote it is that correct according to correct. imdb unless imdb lies <laughs> no you're you're correct and then uh, late in the process we brought in a, a co-writer because um there's so many women's voices uh in the story i didn't want to be that guy and get things wrong so um you know brought in kelsey goldberg um to you know, to, to make sure that things were ringing true. Um, so yeah, it's, it really started with, um, so, uh, we filmed in Pennsylvania, which in the United States is one of the most deregulated, um, states in America. Uh, America is already pretty deregulated as far as industry is concerned. Um, you guys in, in Manchester and in England um, have a ban on fracking. Um, we do not. Uh, so there were two documentaries that I saw that really had a, a profound impact on me. And coincidentally, they were both filmed in Pennsylvania. One was uh, Josh Fox's Gasland, 
Um, and the other was Josh Perbanic and Melissa Troutman's Triple Divide. Um, both showing the real life horrors of um, that the industry can can cause on the environment, on man. Um, so it really started from a place of, you know, we're we're in a climate emergency. Um, who are the people that suffer um, immediately when there is some kind of a industrial catastrophe? Um, you know, it's not usually the the one percent. Uh, those you know in in the castle up high on the hill. It's usually people like working class people um, that have these wells um, and things in their backyard. And, um, and they're already, a lot of them are already struggling. So it was really important. Uh, you know, I grew up in the, in the farms, fields and forests uh, out in the country yeah. um, and on a farm. So it was really about paying respect uh, to the hardworking people that feed all of us uh, and are so important um, to all of humanity and who are really going through it now and have been for decades. And, uh, you know, wanting, wanting to show, um, give, a, give a character-driven uh, horror story based on uh, real-life horrors. I'm glad you mentioned character driven as well, because it's, uh, I was mentioned before, horror films, certainly horror festivals. A lot of films are the same, you know, horror films, not for the most, but there are a lot of horror films that follow the same formula, which is the word I was looking for. Yours doesn't. And I like that because it is character driven. And we spend quite a large amount of time getting to know every single character in, in the two families. And uh, e but, however, even from the very first, and Jane has done an amazing score for the film, the opening few bars, it's, it's a simplistic tone, but it kind of tells you, oh, by the way, stick around, something's coming, and it's probably not going to be very pleasant. It's this wonderful, unnerving score that's over the beginning and throughout the duration of the film. So it's a nice little foreshadowing of what's coming. So I, I did spend, because obviously I didn't know what the plot was, I was spending the time thinking, I feel like I'm inside a pressure cooker. I'm just waiting for the lid to come off. <laughs> what's going to happen and when is it going to happen and is everybody going to be okay and, and so forth. So it's, uh, it's wonderfully rewarding if the lid does come off, which it does. And uh, so horror fans will be very, very happy uh, you know, having watched the film. So Dorota, you, um, you co-directed this film? Yes. How, how, because generally most films directed by one person, you know, it's one voice, one movie. How, what is it like for you to both co-direct? Because I've not really spoken to that many co-directors and it does fascinate me. So how did you, you know, how did you both end up co-directing it and what was the experience like? Well, it's, uh, in our case, it came in really a natural way because as you can see, John is uh, the author of the script. He came up with the story, with the idea. He has amazing energy. So people love him and uh, like to gather around John and invest in that project as well. So he's a person, he's like a great person to attract that kind of environment. And also he's into the character development, into logistics and uh, all those mechanisms working behind the film. And so that means that I could, in peace of mind, go into the art artistic and creative side of the film. So work with the camera, work with the P, deciding on light, deciding on the moods, on uh, lightning, on uh, lenses and all that artistic process, visuals, that was uh, something I could focus without worrying about the other elements such as actors and the performance. I mean, I, if I see performance not working for me, of course I had a voice, but mm -hmm. the big load of other, maybe not necessarily artistically, <laughs> with artistic value, but logistics a film with, with directors had to deal with also, I, I didn't have to deal with. So we were kind of working together, not getting in, uh, on each other ways, but in the same time we're making decisions together or we have trust in each other that John can take decisions I don't have to worry about. And the same on me, I have freedom to do whatever I want. And John says, yeah, that's fine with me. And just 
split, let's regroup. <laughs> so were you both, both working effectively as two separate units? You know, in a lot of films, you'll have a first unit and a second unit. Were you working as an A unit and a B unit or would no, you no. sometimes co-direct the same scenes? Yeah, the same scenes. We were not two separate units. We were just ones. But when John, for, for example, focusing on, on the script accuracy and acting and working with the actor directly, I was focusing, working with the camera, watching the scene to look right and uh, anything related to visuals and execution as far as the cinema, as, as far as the image. Hmm. That's well, the, what's... the look is fantastic with the film. And I, and I, uh, there's in, in a lot of indie films have this wonderful look to it, and I love that. You, you tend, you know, your big Hollywood movies all look. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know what I mean. It's uh, I love the independent look about it, and the film visually is stunning. It's, thank uh, it's, you, thank uh, you. It's very impressive. So let's talk about the cast because you've got amazing. I was going to say some amazing people, but they're all amazing people. So let's talk about assembling the cast. Uh, what drew me to the film initially, because I didn't know the plot, was Adrian Barbeau, who I've seen in a lot of films. I rewatched her in Escape from New York about two weeks ago. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Adrienne's work. But, uh, so how did you gather all this wonderful crew together? Uh, yeah, and thank you. We're big fans of Adrienne and even bigger fans now, uh, knowing her on a, on a personal level. Um, yeah, the, the film started off really uh, small, Stuart, as a, uh, as a Kickstarter campaign um, with a very low budget and um, we received some, some great recognition. Uh, the Kickstarter was initially just available to people in the US, but we had people in the UK and France uh, all over the place that you know, were saying, hey, I wanna contribute to this Kickstarter. So eventually we opened it up um, to, to most countries um, and we had you know, like 250, 275 people contribute to the campaign. That was kind of like the first inkling of like okay maybe we're on to something here with this yeah. story um and Mar that led us to uh, being featured by kickstarter and indiewire and some other places which led to um mark blucas and allison mcatee uh getting on their radar and getting them involved um and then we shot a proof of concept with them um the, i mean the film just so you know it was a seven year um process from starting yeah. starting to outline the story um, to now. Um, once we had Mark and Allison and we shot the proof of concept, um, then we went out with a higher budget and um, raised money over two years uh, with investors. Um, and then we had some great casting directors that Allison um, brought to the table. And really that, that was the key for us um, was Lisa Zambetti and Becky Silverman, who were our casting directors um, brought in, uh, well, they brought the script to Adrian, uh, PJ Marshall, Monica Wyke and Brooke Sorensen. Um, and yeah, Adrian, you know, she, she read the script. She, we had a couple, couple conversations with her over the phone um, and she was really excited to do it. And we were honored, uh, of course, to um, have her. And I mean, she just went above and beyond. We shot in just 18 days. So it was a crazy shoot, as you can imagine, long hours, um, stressful, yeah. uh, a lot of challenges. But um, Adrian and the cast and everyone in the crew, um, you know, you had to you had to know what you were getting into with, with the script and uh, so few days to do it, you know, three weeks to do it. So anything that was needed, um, yeah, Ad Adrian uh, st stepped up for sure. And, that's, uh, that's incredible, 18 days. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you're planning this for, for slightly less than seven years because obviously seven years is up to now. But uh, so you, you spent six point whatever years planning it all and then to, to knock it out of the park in 18 days. That is, that is, that is impressive. Thank you. <laughs> so now, we now have you, the scars <laughs> to prove it. I'm sure you do. Um, I, it's put me off letting anybody frack if I ever own land. I will say that. So I, I don't see this as being a, ooh, I might sign up for this fracking thing. 
I could make a lot of money from it. It's no, I'm done. Whenever I see that word now, I'm going to run away from it. Very, very. Yeah, good. I mean, you know, it's, it's you know, we're we're drilling thousands and thousands of holes miles underground, right? And we don't have cameras down there, so you know, the fear of the unknown. I, I mean, it's it's kind of perfect fodder for uh, for genre material. Um, digging something up that's unexpected besides just all the radioactive chemicals that we're putting into our water anyways because of it yeah but it, it's um, a it's a oh sorry yeah i just wanted to add this besides that you mentioned that it's, uh, it's not necessarily that profit you may think of no it's, well, so it's not easy money is it by the looks no, of uh, no. this whole fracking lark it's a wonderful debate movie as well. I think. I think once the the credits roll, you don't go. Oh well, let's move on to another movie here. You would go. What, what What do you think happened with this part, and what happened with that part? And you would sit and have a lengthier conversation with the people you've just watched the film with, which is something I also love. I mean, I like watching a film for ninety minutes or two hours, but I like when I take something away from that film. And also, you guys have done that wonderfully by giving me the time to get to know the characters in the film. They're not just fodder for the plot device. I, we actually get to know them all. You know, I'm thinking about George's garage and you know, how, why was that suffering? How could we made that better? And all these little plot elements and people doing photography going, oh, I'd like to see more of their photography. So I feel like I know all those people after just sort of 90 minutes of spending time with them. Oh, that's, that's amazing. That I'm so happy to hear that. How are you, how are you finding the whole virtual festival thing i mean it's saving on flight tickets which i suppose is <laughs> is one added yeah well, definitely it has some good sides and bad sides of course you we wish we were there with you guys directly and have indirectly and uh, have that experience life and not being mm. separated by a glass yeah. but in the other i mean that's the same can be a pro that the, we have the easy of conversation and where maybe otherwise we would never met or so that's kind of balancing, I think. And yeah. I think it is, yeah. What, yeah, what it's interesting. It, yeah, what, what you were saying about the conversation afterwards, you know, I guess that's, it's great to be talking to you about this. Um, you know, because the thing I, I miss from in-person festivals is, you know, talking, talking to people afterwards and kind of getting the temperature um, of of the room uh while it's playing out you know um so it it is cool talking to you for sure and you know especially someone that um can appreciate a slow burn uh and not have everything uh, you know there's there's movies that do a great job of being popcorn entertainment and uh you know you get your your gore you get your slashers you get um you know, your blood and guts. Um, but a lot of times for, for me, at least those films, uh, maybe are a little more forgettable. Um, and you have that experience and it's like riding on a roller coaster, you know, it's, it's a quick, quick dose. Um, and then you're, you want the next fix. Um, and hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully with unearth for the patient, uh, horror fan, um, there will be, some rewards in there for those. I, there is definitely some rewards for the horror fan in there. But you also, you know, you mentioned that a lot of horror films, a lot of films in general, will the starting gun will go off and then right. Let's get to the get to the third act quickly in two hours. But the characters in On Earth and the slow burning films, they're real characters, aren't you? You've got to know them. You know, you've got to see them having lunch. You've got to see them trying to trying to fix a tractor or or all these different things. It's not just right. Into the, into the meat grinder, go! Which uh, I do very, very much appreciate. So it was, what was the, Thank so you this, for that. the, the question for each of you, what did you find was the most difficult thing about making the film? If there was one, I'm guessing there was, because filmmaking is not easy at all. And you know, I appreciate yes. everybody that makes films. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, filmmaking is is very difficult, and there were a lot of challenges. I mean, yeah, we would be sugarcoating if uh, we said the opposite. I mean, it, you know, it took seven years to to get to this point. 
Um, actually, when we premiered at Fantasia, it was two years to the day uh, that we wrapped production. So after we wrapped production, it was two years of um, just Dorota and I and Chris Bell, who did our amazing sound design, and Jane Saunders, who you mentioned, who did our, our original score, which were so blessed to have both of their works and then more frames um, doing the visual effects to back up the practicals. Um, you know, was, we were kind of on an island on our own for a while um, after this um, very intense, stressful shoot. Um, I mean, the, the most difficult challenges are the ones that probably every filmmaker faces is, um, you know, unless you're making it, unless you have a rich uncle, um, or which we did not, or uh, know someone in the industry or have industry connections um, or something like that. You know, it's, it's a grind and getting funding together um, was a two year, uh, quite a learning process that we hadn't, hadn't been through before. So that was a challenge. Uh, I mean, really, every step of the way has new challenges. It's you're you're constantly, um, you know, having to navigate rough waters, and um, you know, and filming for eighteen days was challenges constantly. Um, but just just rolling with it and adapting. Dorota, do you have anything to add for challenges? Yeah, sure. Uh, to me, I wasn't involved in the process of uh, gathering the investors and the production, pre-production, more, more like a John, because John was the author of the script and he had that vision in his head. So I was just let him focus on that. But to me it was the most challenging, of course, the production. Production, because that was just 18 days and we have limitation equipment. We, Pennsylvania, it's not necessarily a state where you have really highly developed film industry, especially in that part of the country, of the state. So uh, we had to really, muscle to get the uh, right camera, right lenses and people who can handle that kind of equipment and uh, that was challenging and then filming because you have 11 hours a day you can you have to maximize them and uh, the environment was re was really difficult it was the real location so there wasn't uh, air conditioning and uh, drinks and uh, you know palm trees so it was just really high heat no shadow challenging moving the scenes from day to day to match the weather conditions like we really needed to cast at skies but it was not possible we just had no shadow at all so the challenges as far to create a right image we had let's talk about the, the locations because the farmhouses mm -hmm. are amazing how did you let, tell me the story about those how were they found yeah we actually had uh so in the proof of concept were two different farms and we had actually planned to film at two different farms and they, uh, one of them fell through like at the last minute, which as you can imagine, like spending all this time getting everything up the hill and then it's like, oh shit, My God, what are we going to do? <laughs> so, but uh, thankfully, um, like Leshevsky Farms, uh, who has amazing corn and, um, like DJ Bradley, uh, there, there were some people that came through when it was like, oh, what are we going to do? Because, you know, you know, from seeing the story, they need to be isolated. They need to be like in close proximity to each other so that these, you get the feeling that these families are pretty much all that they have of each other, you know, is each other. Um, so it was, it was difficult, but, oh man, the farms were, were amazing in their real locations and you know every every place that we filmed um yeah was was a real place and it showed um i think it showed what we wanted to is is the reality uh of of farm life and you know the struggles and the challenges and you know the importance of the connection to the environment and um yeah uh, the the dirt and the grit and and all of it like Dorota was saying like the sweat was real you know like in those scenes our our actors were were out there and in, in the elements. 
because it does look at uh, yeah it doesn't make me want to run off and be a farmer at the minute I think it does I mean we all sort of sit and go oh life's difficult at the minute and think for 2020 I think it is for everybody in one way or the other but those families have got it tough they're, yeah. they are they are struggling so you, I can't really blame without going into too much detail I can't blame one of the families for going do you know what that looks like an easy way to make some money I might do that can't blame yeah. if you know. Yeah, for sure. We <laughs> we approached every every character like there's no bad guys, right? It's no. like um you know, every every character is um they're in it. They're in a and they have their own struggles, let alone, you know, at the at the macro level. Um and yeah, it's really hard work. Farming is is a really hard life and you're all in you can't uh you can't take a vacation day if there's an injury you know there's there's no vacations and if you don't have health insurance um which is you know kind of another like um subtopic of of, of the film you know you 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 don't have health insurance you work with injuries um yeah and you have a lot of um a lot of challenges as a modern farmer Sure. I, think, I think as one of the characters says in the film to another character, no, you can't just take a sick day, even if you want one. That, no, you can't because there are things to do. So, and I suppose it's kind of like that when you're actually making a film. It's certainly <laughs> at an independent level. It's like, I don't feel too well, but you've, you've got you've to push on. So. Yeah, for sure. It's, you have to be a certain, certain kind of person, right, to work in uh, film in general and in independent film. Yeah, for sure. So what it's is the... the what, oh, sorry. You have to, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so what is the journey for on Earth? So obviously it's doing its festival run at the minute. People who aren't fortunate enough, like me, uh, to be able to speak to filmmakers or, or you know, view the film in advance. Uh, where, where will they be able to see the film? Of course. Uh, so we have a website that um, we're just working on the launch of now. It's unearthmovie.com. Um, that's going to be the, the best place, of course, um, for all the up-to-date information. We just uh, were happy to announce sign um, international sales uh, with real suspects who are um, there. They deal in art house genre um, and, and challenging films, which, um, you know, we feel unearth fits, fits for sure into their, their catalog of elevated horror, as they say. Um, so we're excited for that partnership as far as getting the film out to as many um, places in front of as many people as we can um, outside of the states. Uh, we're still working on our on our plans um, in the states and now. I mean, the plan for now is is festivals uh, and building word of mouth and you know hopefully um, you know getting. Uh, well, well versed and educated viewers as yourself to spread the word um, to people, and uh, yeah, we we anticipate it'll be available as on as many platforms worldwide uh, as we can, um, and hopefully someday we will have uh, some in in person <laughs> screenings yeah. too, because you know I I think it will play uh, well on on a big screen. Um, yeah. I, I can just imagine some of the audience reactions at certain scenes <laughs> and that would be, it would be a popcorn thrower, I think. So it's, you know, <laughs> I enjoyed watching the film in my own little office with, yeah, here, but I think in a cinema auditorium, yeah, you, you definitely get that extra element. Yeah. Jane's score and Chris's sound, I think will add so much. I hope that people watching it at home at Grimfest will at least put on a good set of headphones um, cause we're, we're very happy with the, the sound. Like J we, uh, if I could mention just real quick, Jane, um, came by way of Monica White, uh, who's in our cast. She recommended her. Um, she went to school for film composition and she was working on an art installation, um, coincidentally that actually incorporated, um, some sounds from the industry into the art installation and her score, which I'm, I'm sure, you know, and we are going to release the score, uh, separately as well, incorporates actual, um, like gas well rig sounds and drills and other equipment, um, into, uh, the score mix itself. So it's, it's a very organic industrial 
machine in and of itself <laughs> mixed with everything else. It is a great score. I'm glad that it is coming out at some point as well. So that's good. So you mentioned the website. Is there a rough time scale for the website to be launched or? We've, we've yeah. got uh, some, some stuff out there now. We haven't um, released the trailer yet. It's, it's waiting. It, it's ready. Uh, we're excited to be releasing that soon. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's, uh, you, can, you can find more information there. There's a newsletter which we send out each month um, with updates uh, as, as far as the developments of the film and whatnot. So yeah, you can definitely go out and you can see a, just a little tease of some footage um, there on the front page. So Brilliant. I will be heading to that after we finish <laughs> that conversation because I my background is generally publicity. I've started making my own little short films as well just because Ooh. I'm speaking to so many filmmakers and it's like, I want to try that. I want to see what it's like to experience everything. So that's that's my poster right behind me. That's awesome. That's, uh, that's, that's my little project at the minute. But uh, What's the title? Uh, she's called Mimi. Mimi, okay. So she's uh, Think Dexter meets My Girl. Uh, nice. It's a little bit. So I'd mentioned challenges, but I don't. I don't like to end things on a on a challenge thing. I want positivity because I am positive that On Earth is a great film and I loved it, and everybody will love it. So, what is the one memory that you will take away, other than the completed film? Because that's cheating if you give that as an answer. But what is the one thing that you will take away from the film, going, "Yep, that's my my number one experience or or story from the film." So I'll go to you first, John. And then uh, the rotter next. Oh, uh, let's see. Number one memory. Um, I mean, honestly, recently a, a high point um, was, I mean, we've, interestingly enough, out of Fantasia, um, I, we've seen a couple like real deep thought pieces on the film, uh, like lengthy analyses. And that like honestly brought a tear to my eye. <laughs> Um, because it was like, oh my God, like it, it's been like, if, if you reach just a couple of people and again, Stuart, thank you so much. Cause I know you don't need to say that you've seen the film and that you like the film and stuff like that. But, um, you know, just, uh, having someone get the film on many, on its many levels, uh, really recently was a high point, um, you know, premiering at, uh, Fantasia and Grimfest and Hardline and, uh, more some festivals we have coming up, um, is, is great. So having people just appreciate, uh, what you, what you put your, um, blood, sweat and tears into is fantastic. And really just being, being on set for as, as difficult as it was, um, just taking a moment to uh and keep this in mind Stuart when you're filming like when it's chaos and things everybody's looking to you for the answer and you're under that pressure um you know take a moment to appreciate it which I did like uh you know writing this story and then seeing this group of talent in front of you just executing your vision um is just it's just a, an amazing life life changing feeling um this this little thing that you created in in your spare time writing for hours and hours at your computer just on black and white on the page um and then people with so much talent um going out there and and doing it is uh yeah that was quite quite a quite a feeling and then people all across the world are sitting watching the film, which that's got to be very surreal as well, I think, is not it? You're like, wow, yeah, it's so surreal. <laughs> yeah, and now it's like it, it's out there and now it's up to you guys, right? Like really now it, it's it's not ours now. Now it's now it's in the world and, um, you know, interesting seeing seeing uh, people's takes from different backgrounds. So. And so when, when you see like, oh, there's a review of On Earth, it, do you instantly go, oh, let me read that? Or, or you, because I know that it, when reviews of my thing come out, whenever it's finished, I will be one of those. It's like, I don't know if I want to click on that link or not for the first few times anyway. So how, how do you cope with all reviews before you've uh, read them? I don't mean after. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So on on premiere day, for sure, I've, I've forced myself not to. Um, you know, people were sending us, us links and Droda probably has a different answer than this, but I was like, I want to appreciate this moment. 
you know, this world premiere moment that, that we've made it to and just, just experience that for a minute. And then, you know, signing with Real Suspects, which happened the day after um, the film came out. Just appreciate all, all of this for a minute before you get into the downward spiral yeah. of, of reviews. But as you can imagine with this film, and actually what, what we're quite happy of is, um, you know, it, the reactions are, are mixed. Like there's people that love it. There's people that... Um, aren't seeing it on a deeper level and are like, Oh, it's slow or it's not scary. You know, you get reviews like that where it's like, okay, well, if you're writing something on a scare level, okay, <laughs> you know, I guess. Okay. But horror is, is, you know, horror fans are, um, you know, they're across, across the board just with every genre. So, um, you know, you, you have a bit of a mixed bag sometimes of emotions reading through the reviews, but again, it's the ones that, um, that get it, that really uh, make it all all worth it. Um, we're not, we didn't seek out to make a film that was going to be kind of like a lowest common denominator, like try and tick all the boxes, make everyone happy, be good for families, and yeah, it's not know, a family stuff. film. No, it's not a family <laughs> film. Children, yeah, yeah, yeah no, children. no children. Uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't seek out to make that kind of movie. So, um, you know, do you it's it's the people that get it that um can connect to it on a deeper level and put themselves in the in the shoes of someone that has lived a different experience than them and have that empathy um those are the people that you know we we hope see the film um and can appreciate it. and now I'll be quiet so Dorota can uh, yeah so Dorota what's your highlight what is the one thing that you take away from the film and go yes that is that's going to sit there on my trophy cabinet for for, uh, for my experience with on earth well for sure uh having uh, the my, my vision let's say how to film it the, the right uh, equipment the gathering that and creating something from nothing that's kind of sat gives you satisfaction that you have certain visions and you can see it, this happening so you can actually film it and execute ideas make it happen that was uh, very giving you a lot of that will give you a lot of satisfaction when you make your movie then uh, also watching actors on the set acting in front of you that gives you thrills like i was amazed by seeing them so close and uh, giving everything out of their body and mind on the stage to just make this scene happen and take taking their bodies as the medium art medium and art medium i never it's amazing experience and what John said, ex appreciating people who um, understand the film and see more than just, is it boring or is it slow or should I show it to children or not? It's just banality of that kind of comments. <laughs> just, but I'm so happy when someone can get it. That's really rewarding. Is, and it, it, is it a slow paced film? Yes, but I love that about it. Is it boring? Far from it. And should I show it to children? Mm, maybe not. Maybe not show it to children. So that's my three very simplistic answers to that. But I think you and the cast and the crew and everybody have done an amazing job putting on Earth together. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not at my non-film job today, but I've had such a good hour and a half and plus this half hour as well chatting to the pair of you about it. So you've, you've made my day as well. So I thank you too and all the cast and crew that aren't here. Thank you so much, Stuart. And hopefully uh, we get to come to Manchester and, and see it with you in a, in a, in a theater at some point. Have, the, a, have a drink afterwards. Definitely. The Grimfest crew are amazing. I, I've attended there for the past three, four years, and they are such a lovely bunch of people. They're all horror enthusiasts, the team of Grimfest themselves. I, I keep telling them, right, you've now adopted me now because I've attended four years running. And they sort of said they have, so that's legally binding. So I'm now part of the Grimfest <laughs> crew. But uh, that's, I've been an absolute pleasure talking to both of you, and it was an absolute pleasure watching the film but i'm, I'm not going to sign up for fracking i'm <laughs> yes. i'm good i'm gonna i'm gonna run a crowdfunding campaign to try and make some extra money i'm not <laughs> gonna open a garage i am uh, and i'm not gonna let anybody frack in my backyard ever so <laughs> thank you very much for that one but you two enjoy the rest of your day i'm going to keep an eye on your website and you will see me tweeting and sharing and bits and pieces 
because uh, I'm now a big fan of your work as well. So, oh, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. You are welcome. So I shall leave you to it. I will probably get this online in the next day or so because uh, Grimfest have said they want to use it as a way to to obviously get more people to watch on Earth. So I'm happy to participate in that and and help everybody out. So thank you very uh, much. Enjoy the it's rest been of your day. Pleasure speaking with you. Been a pleasure speaking to both of you too. Take care, and I will be keeping an eye on seeing what you do next. Cheers. Yeah, uh, I'll be paying attention. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.